Regarding extraterrestrial life, Albert disclosed that there are billions and billions of life forms in the universe, some of which are much more intelligent and more technologically advanced than humans. Many of the advanced races have visited our planet since the early days, and they continue to do so. Their spacecraft are usually undetectable by humans because of their cloaking devices, but sometimes they are spotted as UFOs. The ETs deliberately reveal some of their spacecraft to humans to prepare us for the time which will come when they will make direct and open contact with all humans. And Albert reassures me that all the ETs who have visited Earth are all benevolent and they mean us no harm. And during my, the course of my astral travels, I also learned that all the advanced peace-loving races in the galaxy belong to the Galactic Federation, which monitors aggressive and barbaric civilizations to ensure that they cannot export their violence to other planets. Because of the rules established by the Federation, which are much like the prime directive in Star Trek, the advanced races are not allowed to unduly interfere with the development of inferior races, but they are allowed to prevent malevolent races from traveling to other star systems to wage war. Although they generally cannot unduly interfere with the events on Earth, they, they have helped us improve our technology in subtle ways, and they continue to do so. The secret, according to Albert, the secret to interstellar travel is a warp drive that creates an artificial wormhole around a ship that causes a warp or fold in the space-time continuum. And he says that when a civilization first develops warp drive, the Federation will check it out to ensure that they will not use it to wage war on other planets. If necessary, they will disable the warp drives of violent races to keep them from traveling to other star systems. These revelations may be startling to many humans, but they reflect the stark reality of the cycle of reincarnation on Earth and our place in the universe. Furthermore, Albert tells us that the cycle of reincarnation doesn't just apply to humans, but to all the animals on our planet and to the many different life forms that exist on the other planets. This means that souls can choose to incarnate as animals on Earth or as an ET on another planet as part of their journey on the denser planes. And the good news is that souls don't have any timetables or deadlines to meet. They can choose their own path for evolution and their own timetable. Souls can reincarnate on Earth or on another planet as many times as they like until they feel they no longer need to have a journey in a physical body in order to advance. This is possible because linear time with a past, a present, and a future is just an illusion on the earth plane. The reality is that the past and the future do not exist. We only have the present moment. And that concept is difficult for many humans to fully comprehend. Well, since publishing my first book, many people have asked me what Albert is really like. I can tell you he doesn't have wings sprouting from his shoulders and he doesn't have a halo over his head. In fact, he looks very much like an ordinary homeless man. Although he was always wise and compassionate, at times he was cheeky and flippant and a bit of a rascal. On one of my trips, Albert took me to a cavern under the North Pole where I had a conversation with Gaia, the consciousness of Mother Earth. Gaia is the life force of our beautiful planet, the sum total of all rivers, lakes, oceans, rocks, and deserts that make up the planet, which is known as the third rock from the sun. Gaia is fiercely protected of her flora and fauna and is very distressed at the abuse that humans inflict on Mother Earth and all of her creatures. She voiced her dismay at the way humans dump their garbage into her rivers and oceans, spill toxic chemicals onto her soil, and poison her atmosphere with noxious fumes. Gaia cannot understand why humans are so destructive to their environment, which is detrimental to their health 
and is often disastrous to her other creatures. She advised that she was trying to raise her vibrations so she could rise up to a higher dimension, abundant with love and compassion, but the negativity of humans was holding her back. Gaia says she speaks to humans every day through the sounds of nature, the rustle of leaves in the breeze, the babbling of a brook in the forest, the crashing of the surf on a rocky beach, but most humans do not hear her message because they are too busy chasing money and power. She sincerely hoped that humans will curtail their abuse and learn to live in peaceful harmony with Mother Earth and the creatures who share our planet. It was a beautiful water planet called Proteus, which looked much like Earth, except it had low, no land masses. We dropped down through the clouds and submerged into the clear blue waters, where the plants and sea life reminded me of life beneath the oceans of Earth. Albert led me towards a large coral reef, where we met with two creatures that looked like a humpback whale and a dolphin. These creatures tell me they look familiar because most of the sea life on Earth had been seeded from life on Proteus with the help of the advanced ET races in the galaxy. They told me they kept in telepathic contact with the dolphins and whales on Earth and they did not like what they heard. They asserted that the dolphins and whales on Earth are highly intelligent beings who want to live in harmony with all the creatures on their planet including humans, and they cannot understand why humans continue to abuse them without justification. I promise to take their message back to my fellow humans on Earth. <laughs> 